everybody, it's me, Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie. On this episode of CD Junkie, I want to talk to you about AOR Music and the Frontiers Records label. Now, AOR Music, album-oriented rock. Back in, you know, the late 70s, early 80s, I was, you know, punk, power pop, new wave. That was my jam. And, uh, you know, the AOR stuff, you know, I really liked it, but I wasn't going out and I wasn't buying all the Foreigner albums and all the REO Speedwagon albums and all the Journey albums. Of course, this is stuff I loved, but, you know, I, my money had to go somewhere. So it went to, uh, you know, imports and pop punk and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Not pop punk, but pop comma punk. But I still loved AOR. And, you know, as I, uh, you know, got a job and, you know, I would end up buying all kinds of stuff. I mean, I was buying, you know, a flock of seagulls and buzzcocks and Andy Williams and uh, Journey, uh, you know, all at the same time because I just love to listen to stuff depending on my mood. So now, you know, here we are. We're many, many decades later. We're 40 years on. And I'm still a fan of all that music from back then. And I'm also a fan of AOR today. Uh, now, there aren't a lot of AOR bands in the charts. I mean, let's be honest. AOR is not a popular genre in the vinyl community or YouTube community. People who are pretentious are going to look down at it and say, oh, that's so cliche. That's, that's, that's formulaic. That's repetitive. And... Yeah, it is. But every music is formulaic, cliche, repetitive. You know, if you are not on the inside uh, uh, loving that genre, you are going to uh, have something to say about it. So if you're an AOR fan or a hard rock fan and you listen to punk rock, you're going to say that's cliche, formulaic, and repetitive. Uh, if you are an R&B fan, you're going to look at country and you're going to say blah, blah, you know, the same thing over and over again. You can say that about every single genre out there. But if you love it, if you're inside, if you're in that universe and you're a big fan of it, you, you accept those cliches. You accept the, you know, the fact that everybody has the same formula, uh, so to speak. I'm going to say now that almost every album that I listen to, every artist that I love, uh, you know, somewhere in there is some cliches. And I think that that's what really makes us feel comfortable with that genre. If we don't like the genre, then we're going to uh, criticize it for the same things that we love about the music that we listen to. So that brings me to the label Frontiers Records. Now, what I want to say is, you know, I've been very lucky for the last roughly 40 years. I've worked in the business and I'm not going to get into who I work for, what I do, but uh, I, I am in there and I am working. So over the last, you know, 30, 40 years, I've been able to listen to a lot of music. AOR is just one of the genres. I was lucky enough that the company that I work for, uh, uh, we had a relationship with Frontiers Records, which is a label out of Italy uh, that specializes in AOR, hard rock, heavy metal. So I was lucky to be able to uh, have access to a lot of the promotional material that came in. So I would get, you know, these stacks of CDs uh, and I would be able to listen to them and, and write about them and talk about them. So I'm very grateful for that. Lots of great stuff here. I mean, seriously, uh, you know, I love the AOR music that has keyboards. Oh, here's Yoso. That's Bobby Kimball from Toto and two members from Yes. And they formed like a little mini super group uh, that lasted one album. And uh, so they called it Yoso. You know, that's Yes and Toto together. This Frontier stuff, like I said, there's always something cool and melodic on it. I'm going to talk about just a few things that I really like here. It was 2009, 2010, around that period that all this stuff was coming out, maybe 2011, 12. And so I haven't been able to afford to keep up on what's going on. So the music that you're going to hear, the music I'm going to talk about, it's already 12, 13 years old, but it still sounds really, really good because the hooks, you know, I'm a pop kid. I love hooks. Uh, but some of the stuff that I really do like is there's a group called Wigwam. And uh, I remember hearing this uh, what 13 years ago and loving it. And, and every mix CDR that I made had a song from this called Do You Want to Taste It? And just recently in the last year on the Peacemaker TV series, uh, they used the Do You Want to Taste It? as the theme song at the, the opening of, of each episode. And uh, I, I, I still haven't seen any of those episodes because I don't have HBO. But I love that song, and I'm glad that that's finally getting some recognition. There's also Blackwood Creek, which is uh, Kip Winger. I believe that this was the band that he formed before Winger, and then they just got back together, and they they recorded an album for Frontiers. Really good stuff. Here's Sunstorm, one of uh, several Sunstorm albums. This has Jolyn Turner on vocals. 
Uh, here's On the Rise. This is really cool uh, guitar plus keyboards, uh, AOR music. Really fantastic. Auras, uh, the singer, could have been in Journey. Uh, uh, they could have picked this guy instead of Arnel Pineda. So, you know, if he ever decided to leave, they can get the singer from this because, you know, he's definitely influenced by uh, Steve Perry as well. Then there is Robert Berry, uh, Blank Faces. And uh, that's that's nice, just straight um, AOR music. Lots of good tunes on that. Uh, Winger, it's just harder and edgier than, than I thought Winger was. Here's Hardline. Uh, I think this is a band that he was either discovered or produced by Neil Sean from Journey. Uh, this one here is a later album. Uh, they reunited and put out an album on Frontiers. It's so the great thing about Frontiers is they have a lot of albums by new artists, and then they have a lot of albums where they combine artists from different bands, and then they have a lot of classic artists as well, like Asia put out a couple albums on Frontiers. Journey did uh, lots of great artists on here. Here's Jimmy Jameson, singer from Survivor, and that's one of his solo albums right there. Uh, here is a group called, uh, I believe it's pronounced Place Vendome, and it's Michael Kiske from uh, Halloween. Here's Spin Gallery. Now, the singer Spin Gallery uh, has kind of a John Anderson-esque voice, not quite as high, uh, but uh, uh, you know a lot of really good songs on that. There's a band called The Trophy, uh, a band called Los Angeles, a band called Prime Suspect, uh, this is just a small sample of uh, what Frontiers has to offer. Just great, great, hook-laden, uh, melodic, AOR, classic rock, stadium rock, whatever you want to call it. It's all good. Now, I'm going to let you hear a little bit of it. I think I picked uh, a song from about 15 different groups uh, and uh, put about 15, 20 seconds in there uh, and came up with this uh, six-plus-minute medley. Uh, sit back, relax, uh, enjoy this, and I'll see you on the other side.
that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this little talk about AOR and the Frontiers label. It's a label from Italy. Lots of great artists. Definitely check them out. You know, if you're flipping through the used bins and you find something on Frontiers Records, uh, you're probably going to dig it if you're a fan of melodic rock. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe to ring that bell for future notifications. And until the next time, remember me. I'm Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie. Thank you.